Hi there, my name is Max. I'm an application engineer here at UMAX, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to use the handheld scanning modes on the Inscan Pro HD. This will be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up, calibrate, scan, edit data, post-process, and more. Again, this scan will be focused on the handheld scanning modes, so the fixed scan modes will be in a different video. Let's get into it. Let's begin by unloading your scanner box. Go ahead and plug the scanner into your computer via the attached USB cable. Then put the power adapter into the socket of the scanner cable. Now plug the power adapter into your power outlet. You should see the scanner lights light up. This indicates that the device is powered. Let's also prepare the calibration equipment. Set out the calibration board and the calibration board stand. To get the software, you can either use the included installer on the USB flash drive or download it online using the link in the description. When using for the first time, you may need to make an account to sign in with the newer versions of the software. Always keep the software up to date. Once the software is open, make sure that your device is recognized as online by the software. If it's not, it will say offline in the leftmost tab on the top left, and then click the calibration button. Calibration should be done every time you move your workstation, knock or drop the scanner, or if you just notice any reduced performance or strange behavior. Place the calibration board as shown in the first step. Hold the scanner above the board like so, and aim the crosshair being projected from the scanner in the middle square. Press the play button on the scanner, and slowly bring the scanner up and down as needed until you have lit up all the boxes shown on screen. The next steps are the same, but with the board in different positions utilizing the stand to prop it up. Make sure to not angle the scanner in these later steps. Once you've advanced through all the steps, calibration is done. Let's talk about scan modes. HD scan mode prioritizes quality. You will have to be a little bit slower at this mode compared to the rapid scan mode, which is better for large objects where very high resolution is necessary and the speed and ease of scanning is more important. There's also fixed scan mode, which is great for passive scanning, especially with smaller objects. We will have a separate video to go over fixed scanning. Now let's make our project. Let's take a look at project settings. Texture scanning can be turned on if we have a color pack installed and the white balance has been calibrated. For alignment, or how our scanner maintains tracking, there's a few different modes. Feature tracking only looks at the physical geometry of the object. It works great for objects that have a lot of rich physical features, but can sometimes get confused by repeating patterns or symmetry. Marker tracking uses the marker stickers. You must put them all over your object in order to scan in this mode. Hybrid mode uses both markers and features. And it's what I would recommend for most projects because you can simply put markers in those areas that the feature tracking has problems with. Our resolution will determine the quality of the data in our scan. The better the resolution, the larger the file size, and the more memory and CPU intensive the processing will be. To begin scanning, aim your scanner at your subject and press the play button. This will put the scanner in preview mode. While in preview mode, let's adjust our brightness so that there's only a little bit of red on our subject shown in the camera window. To adjust the brightness while scanning, we can double tap the play button, which will make it so the plus and minus buttons on our scanner will adjust the brightness. You can double tap the play button again to revert the plus and minus buttons to their previous function, which is zooming in and out. Once everything looks good, you can press the play button again to begin scanning. Remember to move slow around sharp angles and new areas. Also, keep an eye on the bars to the left of the screen. That is your distance indicator. It's good to keep that in the green somewhere in the middle. We can press the play button once to pause the scan and we will move our object to get a better angle. Now we resume and finish up. Now let's talk about data editing. When your scan is paused, you can use the selection tools to select parts of your data by holding down shift and dragging over to the portion you want to select with your mouse. With that selection, we can do a few different things. We can delete, invert the selection, or make a connected domain. Connected domain just selects all the data that is connected to our selection. We can also make a cutting plane. A cutting plane will delete any data under the plane and prevent future data that would appear under the plane from being scanned. We can make it by drawing a line or selecting data. Now let's generate point clouds, which will refine and filter our scan. And we can even continue to work on it after we're done. Now let's take a look at project groups. Project groups are a way to manipulate several scans in the same project file. We can even align them together. This is very useful for larger objects, techniques such as digital assembly, 
or objects that can't be scanned in one piece for whatever reason. To make a project group, go to the Project Groups tab. Press this button and select your new project group. Now we have a clean slate to work with, but our other scan is still there. Once we have two project groups with their point clouds generated, we can press this button to align them together. Select the groups here to place them in their respective windows for alignment. Now let's choose a method. We can align by features, markers, or by selecting common points. Your groups must share some common data in order to be aligned together. If you're using a non-automatic method, then the selecting of points is done by holding shift and clicking. Once you have finished and your scan data looks good, we can push this button to turn our point cloud data into a mesh 3D model. We have many settings to play around with. Most are self-explanatory. Mesh optimization will add more resolution in curved areas. Usually, I go with recommended settings. Watertight meshing will seal any gaps in the mesh. However, it should only be used for smaller gaps, not large ones, as the result will be very messy. After we're done, we can always revert and remesh until we're happy with the results. Then we have post-processing tools, which have a lot of the same capabilities as in meshing settings. Here we can seal holes, simplify to reduce file size, smooth, and more. Every change you make is reversible, so don't be afraid to experiment with these tools. Once we're done, and your mesh looks exactly how you want it, you can press this button here to directly send it to a program of choice. Or, we can just save it here. There's also measurement tools available for our mesh, including distance, surface area, and volume. If you're selecting points for measurement, the controls will work the same way as the rest of the program, by holding shift and clicking with your mouse. Alright, that's about it for the Pro HD. Thanks for watching.